Air India Express 611 consisted of two pilots, four cabin crew members and 183 passengers. It was scheduled on the 11th of October 2018. The captain had 4,300 hours of total flight time and 540 hours of command experience on the Boeing 737. 800. The first officer had 4,200 hours of total flight time and 385 hours on the same aircraft. The first flight of the day was completely uneventful. The first officer was pilot flying for that flight. They pulled up to their stand at 23.37 local time. The weather in Tiruchirappalli was really good. Only a few clouds around, the temperature of about 27 degrees Celsius and calm winds, which meant that the crew had a choice of which runway they were going to use. The captain was going to be pilot flying for the return flight and he chose runway 27 for takeoff because it had a shorter departure route. The speeds for departure were 143 knots for V1, 144 knots for VR and 151 knots for V2. At around 040 local time, the crew were ready to taxi out from their stand. They started taxiing out, backtracking to line up for runway 27. At 049 local time, the captain advanced the thrust levers to 40% N1. He done this because the engines need to start accelerating up to that value in order to make sure that during the later stage of the engine acceleration, they will accelerate at the same pace. After that, the first officer called stabilized and then the captain pressed the toga buttons and said, set takeoff thrust. The auto throttle started setting the thrust to the predetermined value, which was about 98%. The auto throttle operates in N1 mode initially, driving the thrust to the target value. At 84 knots, it transitions to throttle hold, maintaining the current thrust level. At 117 knots, the captain's seat backrest suddenly collapsed backwards. What do you do if you suddenly fall backwards? You grab for something to hold on to, don't you? This is exactly what happened in this case as well. When we look at the flight data recorder readings, it shows that there was a small pitch-up command from the captain's yoke, but also the thrust that was set at 98% with throttle hold on the auto throttle was moved back to 77%. The captain handed over control to the first officer, who failed to verify the thrust lever position. The first officer continued the takeoff, unaware of the thrust reduction. The captain took about five seconds to put his seat back to the correct position again, and once he is sitting correctly, he looks out and he realizes that it's only about 2,000 feet left of the runway. He looks down on the speed display and he also sees that they haven't reached the speed they're supposed to have. They're nowhere near the V1 and VR speeds. So he continues to accelerate and he says, my controls. So now the roles are reversed a second time and he is now pilot flying. When there's about 1,000 feet left on the runway, the captain initiates the rotation. He recognizes that there's more control forces needed than what he's used to but he continues to rotate more and more and more. And eventually, at about 14 degrees nose up, the aircraft gets airborne. The tail strike caused significant damage to the aircraft, including a large hole in the aft fuselage, damage to the horizontal stabilizer and the loss of several antennas that form part of the localizer system of runway 27. Despite indications of a tail strike, the crew continued the flight towards Dubai. They conducted system checks that appeared normal, leading them to believe the aircraft was airworthy. After receiving information about the extent of the damage, the crew diverted to Mumbai. At 5.08 local time, the aircraft touched down safely at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport. The investigation revealed that the captain's seat backrest had a faulty recline mechanism. It also highlighted the crew's failure to follow the tail strike checklist, which mandated the pilots to land at the nearest suitable airport. The Air India Express 611 incident underscores the importance of adhering to standard operating procedures. The crew's failure to follow the tail strike checklist was a critical factor in the incident. Situational awareness. The crew's confidence in their system checks overshadowed other indicators of a serious issue. This incident serves as a reminder of the importance of maintaining situational awareness, adhering to standard operating procedures and making informed decisions in all flight phases. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this video informative, please like, share and subscribe for more content on aviation safety and other related topics. Until next time, stay safe.